Wait, what, what? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most shocking moments in South Park that made fans' jaws drop in utter disbelief. Do you like it, Scott? I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tenement Chili. Number 20. Kyle's Censored Speech 200 and 201 are some of the most controversial episodes in South Park's history, but not for the reasons you may think. Rather, the controversy stems from how Comedy Central handled the difficult content. The episode was slated to show Muhammad, the prophet and founder of Islam, but a radical group threatened violence if Muhammad was shown, and in the midst of related controversies, Comedy Central censored the episode. Kenny, dude, what the hell? You're supposed to be watching Muhammad! <laughs> oh, thank God. Hey, Muhammad. Really sorry about all this, dude. In a brilliant and shockingly meta speech, Kyle proclaims that you can get whatever you want through violence and intimidation. Not so ironically, this entire speech was bleeped by Comedy Central. People thought the network was capitulating to terrorists, and it left them, like the bleeped out Kyle, speechless. Number 19. Osama Bin Laden Saves the Day Season 14's It's a Jersey Thing sees the citizens from the state of New Jersey, very much based on the cast from New Jersey-based reality TV shows, take over the town of South Park and, eventually, the country. South Park citizens defend their town from the encroaching Jerseyites, resulting in a fierce battle. They call for help from an unlikely ally, Osama Bin Laden. Just when all seems lost, he and a group of Al-Qaeda pilots arrive to save the day. Who is that? It's Al-Qaeda! If the visual wasn't shocking enough, Bin Laden is honored for his efforts in a ceremony, only to be killed shortly afterwards. Even though it's in service of a joke, seeing Bin Laden depicted as a hero is sure to leave a few jaws on the floor. Number 18. Garrison's Sex Ed Class Okay, children, who can tell me what a condom is? Season 5's proper condom use is intentionally provocative. The students of South Park Elementary are given, let's just say, some flawed lessons on sexual education. In one, Miss Chokes on Dick scares the girls by teaching them about STDs and showing them graphic pictures of herpes and syphilis. But that's nothing compared to Garrison's class. For one thing, this class is way too young to be learning about condoms and sex. They'd rather be finger painting. But Garrison also teaches them in a wickedly inappropriate manner that leaves the students and the viewers at home absolutely stunned. Number 17. The Death of the Queen Season 11's The Snook is a parody of 24, as Cartman suspects that a new student is a terrorist. The story then unwinds to some truly ridiculous places involving the likes of Russian communists, the FBI, and the Queen. You see, the British attempted to invade the United States in 18th century sailing vessels, hoping to stop the American Revolution. However, the ancient fleet is quickly destroyed by the modern-day Air Force. Aghast at her country's failure, the Queen then proceeds to take her own life. The entire plotline is puzzling in true South Park fashion, but watching the Queen's demise is what truly leaves viewers speechless. Number 16. Mr. Adams Makes Some Jokes The poor kid is suitably named, and it proves it right off the bat. The episode opens with Kenny's parents being arrested for operating a meth lab, an event that is documented on the reality TV series White Trash in Trouble. Kenny is then sent into foster care and meets his caseworker, Mr. Adams. Adams is not such a nice man, as he continuously cracks inappropriate jokes. Oh, whoops, that isn't your case file, it's the Penn State University Gazette. <laughs> I'm joking, that's just a joke, we like to have fun here. It is your case file, I was just all like, it's the Penn State Gazette to be like a joke, we have fun. They specifically reference the Penn State scandal, which saw football coach Jerry Sandusky being charged with horrible crimes. It's not really something you make light of, but then again, such a thing has never stopped South Park. What am I, a recruitment coach for Penn State? 
<laughs> it's not funny! Number 15. Paris Hilton goes where the sun don't shine. Let me out of here! Remember when Paris Hilton was all the rage? The episode which she was featured in aired back in 2004, around the time that The Simple Life and One Night in Paris launched the star to infamy. The young girls of South Park become infatuated with Hilton, and Mr. Slave hopes to break her corruptive influence once and for all. He challenges the star to a ridiculous battle, and everything about it is deeply inappropriate and jaw-dropping. But the best is saved for last, as the man jumps on Hilton and essentially absorbs her. Only on South Park. Number 14. An Unfortunate Opening I want you all to take a close look at your math exams. The show's season 22 premiere episode is just about as dark as it gets, and that's saying a lot. While the show isn't shy about tackling hot-button topics, the issue that's the center focus in this episode might be too sensitive for some viewers. It opens in a rather jarring manner, as the kids go over a recent math test while trying to ignore what's evidently taking place outside of the classroom. The satire is incisive and nothing graphic is shown, as the incident is relayed entirely through audio. But regardless, this type of content can prove deeply troubling, and some may be upset that South Park went there at all. Now let's move on to the next equation. Number 13. Red Rocket We return to proper condom use for, if you can believe it, something even more shocking. If you thought Garrison teaching sex ed to preschoolers was bad, then just wait. The episode opens with the boys learning that one can milk a dog. Of course, this is not actually a thing, and the boys just try it out. Cartman gleefully shows the trick to Kyle and Stan, who then performs it on their own dog. Wow, you learned all this from the fifth graders? Yeah, I guess they thought we were cool, so they showed us how to do it. Hey, come here, dog! Dog, come here! <laughs> the fact that this made it onto television is, frankly, unbelievable. Not only is the concept baffling, but the accompanying visuals are extraordinarily graphic. And remember, this was 2001! No wonder why South Park caused such a stir in its heyday. Well, Jesus, haven't they taught you these things in school? What things? Number 12. Indiana Jones South Park is arguably the most topical sitcom on television. But it being so topical, it also becomes a period piece. I can't watch! Let's get out of here, Kyle! For example, this episode from Season 12 takes us right back to 2008, when Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull caused a cultural uproar. Kyle is traumatized after watching the latest Indiana Jones film, which sees the titular hero receive the worst treatment possible from George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. The satire is on point, and the message is effectively, if crudely, conveyed. But crude is the operative word here. What happens to Indy could prove way too harsh and unpleasant for some viewers. Once again, we're amazed that this was allowed on television. I thought it was pretty good. Number 11. Steve Irwin's Fate Famed crocodile hunter Steve Irwin passed away unexpectedly when he encountered a stingray in the wild. Less than two months later, South Park aired a Halloween-themed episode that included the late Irwin. Hey, Satan, you got a little problem. Whoa. Somebody showed up in a crocodile hunter costume. It's really offending some of the other guests. Had it been like his previous appearance on the show, it may have come and gone without notice. Oh, there's a king croc right there. He must be 4 meters, 12, 13 feet long at least. However, this time he was depicted as a guest at Satan's party, sporting a stingray sticking out of his chest. Even Satan himself questioned the timing of this particular appearance. Hey, uh, hi, listen, dude. You know, the whole crocodile hunter thing, it, it's just a little soon, you know? I mean, he just died a few weeks ago. For anyone familiar with Irwin's passing, this was a moment that made many of us cringe. Number 10. Randy Plays Wheel of Fortune With apologies to Jesse Jackson is a very famous episode in the South Park canon, 
known for its scathing satire and famous opening sequence. Randy appears on Wheel of Fortune and is given a rather unfortunate clue. Confident in his answer, Randy blurts out the N-word, resulting in a slew of dropped jaws, popped eyes, and face palms. Oh. Ooh. Oh, naggers, of course. The word was left uncensored in its original broadcast, which came as quite the surprise. But rather than attracting controversy, the episode was widely praised for its nuanced writing and intelligent social commentary. Regardless, just like everyone on the show, we were left speechless when that word came out of Randy's mouth. I can't believe you said the N-word on national television. What? Well, what was I supposed to do, Sharon? I thought I was going to make $30,000. Number 9. The Scientology Reveal Back then, there was a galactic federation of planets, which was ruled over by the evil Lord Xenu. <laughs> oh, boy. Unlike many of the items on this list, this one leaves us speechless not for the audacity of the writing, but for the reality that we're exposed to. When Stan learns the truth about the origins of human despair, we're all left sitting in our seats, collectively wondering how anyone could think such things were real. But I don't know any of this stuff. Neither did Elrond when he started. He said he just closed his eyes and wrote down whatever came to mind. Many religious origin stories require some suspension of disbelief, but never to the degree we see here. Stories of volcanoes, soul-sucking machines, and an evil space lord are a lot harder to swallow in comparison to parting the Red Sea. What's better than telling people a stupid story and having them believe you? Having them pay you for it, stupid! Number 8. Cartman's Antics When it comes to Eric Cartman, South Park has never shied away from showcasing the darker side of this character. It's my mom's new minivan, so I'm the captain, Kyle. I don't care! You're not making me wait in the van again! Cartman's incessant anti-Semitic attitude has surfaced multiple times, especially against his friend Kyle. But in The Passion of the Jew, Cartman's obsession with Mel Gibson's film about Jesus brings out something worse. Eric, sweetie, there's a bunch of people showing up in our backyard saying something about a meeting. Yeah, Mom, I'm holding a meeting for all the people who love the passion as much as I did. Convincing locals that he's just a fan of the movie, we see near the end that it's merely his attempt to reform the Nazi party. Dressed as Hitler, it's far more shocking than any far crazed depiction of Mel Gibson chasing the boys for his $18 back. Wait, there's his wallet! Freedom! Oh crap, he's only got 20s, you got $2, Kenny? Jesus is Lord! Hey, right, let's get the hell out of here! Number 7. Butter's Mom's Evil Plan in Butter's very own episode, he was all excited about getting to go to Bennigan's. His parents were going to celebrate their anniversary. All right, Mom, I'm all done wrapping Dad's anniversary present for you. Oh, is it someone's anniversary soon? <laughs> oh, you. Just kidding. Oh, I wonder what it is. It was all innocent enough until his mom, Linda, found out the truth about where her husband had been. Sure, a spouse certainly would be surprised to find out their husband is visiting explicit movie theaters and social clubs, but going from surprise to outright attempted murder is another thing. You know that Mommy loves you an awful lot, don't you? Well, sure I do, Mom. I love you too. And sometimes mommies do things that seem hurtful to their babies, but it's really for the best. Audiences were pretty shocked to see her take all her rage out on Butters. Watching the car float down the river, you have to wonder what she was thinking. Thankfully, Butters was trapped in what must have been the lightest car ever, as it merely floated downstream, saving him. Finally! Well, now that the car has come to a stop, it's safe for me to unfasten my seatbelt. Number 6. Garrison and Bob's Wall Break Breaking the fourth wall refers to characters in a fictional medium talking to the viewers. Oh! Uh. Okay, what the hell is this? Hey, come back! But what do you call it when they talk not to the audience, but to the people who made the series? In a QAnon-themed episode, Bob White is trying to convince Garrison the elites control everything. Don't give in to them! They're trying to make a joke of everything! That's what they do! How do the elites control Mr. Service's bowels? 
as he rants to the sky, we're treated to South Park's animators changing his appearance within the show. With the likes of Deadpool making fourth wall breaking common, it's a fun detour to see this gag spun so differently. It's the kind of surprise that no one expected, but gave all the viewers a good laugh. Number 5. Chef's Death Following South Park's depiction of his religion, a statement was reportedly made on Isaac Hayes' behalf by his Scientology entourage after the actor suffered a stroke that requested that the voice of Chef be released from the series. Uh, guys? Did Chef seem a little, uh, trippy to you? Instead of just letting the character disappear into oblivion, the creators made a bold statement about their stance on the situation. In his final episode, Chef has returned as a changed man, seemingly brainwashed by a cult he had become enamored with. When he finally comes to his senses, it's too late, and we're faced with his ultimate demise. No, Chef! They filled your head with lies! Can't you see that? Get the hell out of here, children! Yes. Looks like our fruity little club is safe after all. Fans likely guessed the character would leave the show, but no one could have expected this. Some of us feel hurt and confused that he seemed to turn his back on us. But we can't let the events of the last week take away the memories of how much Chef made us smile. Number 4. Cartman's Baby Ploy a season 15 episode found a way to spin the controversy around the NCAA's use of players in a way no one ever saw coming. Are you referring to our student athletes? Student athletes? Oh, that is brilliant, Zap. The show tugs on our heartstrings when Kyle's shown a hospital wing filled with infants hooked on substances. That's quickly slammed into reverse the moment he sees Cartman. Oh, hey, Cal. What are you doing here? I'm volunteering. It's here we find Eric taunting these kids with crack cocaine. As the babies fight over a small portion, Cartman films the entire exchange and posts it on the internet to make a profit. NCAA and slavery comparisons aside, the entire idea of using children in this way is utterly appalling and thus pretty shocking to the viewer. So then what if Cartman starts a lucrative <laughs> business of getting crack babies to play basketball? Yeah. <laughs> and he videotapes these crack babies. Yeah. You know, it becomes really big, but he doesn't pay the crack babies anything. Number 3. How Superman Heals Himself Stem cell treatment has been shown to have many practical medical uses, and often the best types of stem cells come from embryos. Stem cell research is critical in the quest for helping the disabled. Typically, the cells are acquired via a specific type of medical procedure. On South Park, we find famed Superman actor Christopher Reeve endorsing the use of stem cells to help cure his mobility issues. Hello, Gene. So good to see you. You're cured, Chris. It's time to stop using stem cells. Stem cell research has made me stronger than I ever thought possible. Expecting to see him undergo a surgery, viewers were shocked to find him consuming the cells directly from the donor. From the moment he cracks one open like an egg on Larry King, every viewer cringed at the idea. The visual alone is hard to swallow, but knowing how kind a soul Reeve was makes watching it even harder. Tom, many celebrities have spoken out in protest of stem cell research, but after seeing this, how can they protest now? Number 2. The Blood Sacrifice Woodland Critter Christmas started out like a classic holiday story with cute animated wild animals. We can't have a tree with no star on it. What are we gonna do? Now don't be down, y'all. Maybe our new friend can help us find a star. But as soon as Stan saves them from a mountain creature, we quickly learn how evil these critters really are. As they describe how the porcupine is going to give birth to the Antichrist, they burst into celebration by sacrificing one of their own for the devil himself. You've done us a huge favor, Stanny! Without the mountain lion around, Lady Porcupine can give birth to the Antichrist! Yeah! Yay! With his wide eyes and gaping mouth, Stan's reaction to his newfound friend's excitement was a mirror to all the show's viewers watching things unfold. 
The episode represents the antithesis of every cute holiday special we're so used to. The graphic nature and the surprise all leave us speechless, and for obvious reasons, unable to show you the scene in its entirety. Hey, look everyone! It's our old pal, Stanny! Oh boy, Stanny! You came just in time! Yeah, we've got a big problem! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Cartman's Revenge it shouldn't come as a surprise that this would be our number one. This is the dumbest thing you've ever done, Cartman. Oh, it won't be so dumb when Scott Tenement arrives. I suggest you stay to see the fireworks. Virtually any longtime fan of the show knows the story of the infamous chili contest. After having been harassed repeatedly by Scott, Cartman takes his revenge out on him in the most sinister way possible. Up until this point, we knew Cartman was a bratty and selfish kid. But this told audiences just how sadistic and petty he could really be. I made you eat your parents. As he dances around singing about what he's done, even Stan and Kyle are left speechless at how far Cartman has taken this. Yes! Oh, let me taste your tears, Scott. Mm, your tears are so yummy and sweet. Dude, I think it might be best for us to never piss Cartman off again. Has anything from South Park ever offended you? Let us know in the comments below. Yay, sacrifice me to the devil! Yay, yay, yay! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.